want the feeling hungry, cold, and happy all have in common. Hunger, temperature, and emotion are all things that are controlled and regulated by your brain. Today, I will be your tour guide as we explore the four lobes of your brain and the amazing things these parts can do. We'll take a quick stop at some interesting places inside each lobe. Let's begin at the front of your brain, just behind your forehead, where we'll find the frontal lobe. This area is often called the control center of the brain because it combines information from other parts of the brain and uses that information to think and reason. The frontal lobe is responsible for solving problems, planning and making decisions, and regulating your emotions. It is also involved in helping you speak and move. One of the key differences between the brains of humans and animals is that we humans have a much larger frontal lobe. Because it is so large, it takes a long time for your frontal lobe to fully develop. In fact, your frontal lobe will not finish developing until you're around 25 to 30 years old. Within your frontal lobe is a part of the brain called Broca's area. This was discovered in 1861 by a French doctor named Paul Broca when he was working with patients who struggled to speak. We now know this area of the brain is responsible for producing both speech and written language. Near the back of your frontal lobe, you'll find the motor cortex of your brain. This area allows movement, such as lifting your hand, taking a step, or scratching your nose. Your brain is divided into two hemispheres, and you have a motor cortex on each side. The left side of your brain controls movements on the right side of your body, and the right side of your brain controls movements on the left side of your body. Now that we've had a good look around your frontal lobe, follow me to your parietal lobe, located at the top of your brain. This lobe is responsible for processing information about your sense of touch. Nerves all over your body collect information and send it to your parietal lobe. This happens very quickly. For instance, if you touch a hot pan on the stove, your nerves sense the heat and send the information to your parietal lobe. Your parietal lobe then sends back signals to move your hand, and you jerk your hand away from the pan all in less than a second. This part of your brain is also essential for proprioception, which is your body's understanding of where and how it is positioned in its environment. When you hang upside down on the monkey bars or swing really high on a swing set, your parietal lobe is hard at work, making sense of how your body is moving through space. One of the most important parts of your parietal lobe is your sensory cortex. It plays a vital role in understanding and responding to pain, temperature, pressure, and proprioception. Scientists are learning that your sensory cortex has a great effect on how you process and regulate your emotions. Next time you are feeling excited, scared, or disappointed, you can thank your sensory cortex. Now, if you follow me all the way to the back of your brain, we'll see the third lobe, your occipital lobe. This very important part of your brain is where you process everything you see. The occipital lobe receives information from your eyes and can perceive what is going on visually, the location, depth, color, size, and distance of objects you're seeing. Then, it compiles that information and identifies what you're looking at. This process happens almost instantaneously. Finally, let's go downstairs to your temporal lobe, located near your ears. Even the location of this part of your brain gives us a clue that it processes auditory information, 
allowing you to hear and understand language and other sounds. Interestingly, your temporal lobe is also where you form memories. Your brain can connect sensory information like smells and tastes to memories of certain people or places. If a certain smell reminds you of a family member, or if the taste of a specific food reminds you of a particular place, your temporal lobe is doing its job well. Our last stop in this tour of your brain is a place inside your temporal lobe called Wernicke's area. A German neurologist called Karl Wernicke discovered this part of the brain in 1874. This is where all of your speech comprehension takes place. Remember Broca's area in your frontal lobe? Both Broca's area and Wernicke's area are related to speech. Broca's area helps you produce language for others to hear, while Wernicke's area allows you to process and understand the words other people are saying to you. These two areas are actually connected by bundles of nerves and work closely together to help you communicate. Well, that concludes our tour of your brain. Isn't it amazing how God made your brain small enough to fit inside your head, yet complex enough to control your entire body? Each part of the brain has specific jobs, and the parts all work together to keep you alive, help you move and speak, enable you to learn incredible information, and even allow you to remember important things that happened in your past. The brain is truly a wondrous creation.